and our final interview from the fabulous 14th annual PSASA convention. I have in studio Nikki Bush. Welcome to it. My name is Boo Prince. Nikki, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Boo. And Nikki, you just gave the most extraordinarily moving keynote speech, I'm sure, on a really, really hard topic. It was entitled, What If, What If Happens? And I would really like you to share with us a little bit about your story, just briefly, so that we can get some context. Boo, essentially what happened was we were the victims of a home invasion and two intruders entered our home, shot my husband dead, held my son up at gunpoint and my eldest son fortunately was not home at the time. I managed to lock myself away. I followed a scenario plan that I'd actually instilled in my children for years when they were young. If I tell you to run, lock yourselves away in the bathroom, do not stop and ask me questions and only come out when... I say so. And so that's literally what saved my life. And I think that that is a really interesting concept that I teach to parents on a normal day anyway, with regard to uh, teaching your children to have scenarios for what if, what if happens? Because right. you need plan B should what if actually eventuate. Because then you have a blueprint and you can run on automatic you don't have to make choices and decisions. You have a plan. The Navy SEALs have plans. That's why they survive. And uh, I, I do say that that's why, that's why I'm here today is because I, I ran a plan. Well, Nikki, one of the things I think which is just so incredibly relevant to all speakers in, in terms of what you were addressing in your speech is that all of us kind of live day to day thinking, well, I've got a plan for what I'm doing in terms of my business as it's currently running, but nobody seems to have a real plan for when life takes its course. And yes. as you said so clearly, you know, life does not go in a straight line. Yeah. There are going to be very unexpected things that happen along the way. Can you give us a little bit of advice about how you managed to survive this scenario as a speaker? Because obviously as a speaker, you get up and you're supposed to be the person who knows what's going on in the room and, and knows what happens next, etc. And now you're suddenly placed in this incredibly vulnerable situation. How do you carry on? Yeah, so vulnerability is a huge thing. And I have to say it was a gift, has been a gift to actually experience what true vulnerability is all about. I guess asking for support is essential. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that the PSASA members, friends within the organization have just been so unbelievably generous with their time, with their offers of support, um, even offering to speak for me free of charge should I not be able to get up and speak. Wow. And knowing yourself really well uh, is so important and knowing who to ask for what support. So that's that intuition. That's not a scenario. That's not up here. That is here. What's my gut feel? What do I need right now? Building a strong brand while things are going well is vital because you may need to lean on that brand for a while while you're incapacitated. Mm -hmm. So a what if moment could be anything. Illness, death of a loved one, maybe your parents, your spouse, a child, um, long-term illness, it could be loss of wealth, loss of health, loss of a business, loss, loss of your home, you name it, it could be anything. Everybody experiences loss on a very regular basis, but I think we tend to sweep loss under the rug yeah. and we don't mourn our losses. And I don't think that we can show up and be authentic speakers unless we work through our stuff our baggage, our issues, and a what if moment will bring up your issues. And we need to be able to face them head on. And I guess one of the, the, the things that's helped me keep moving, because while my entire world was falling apart, I still had to earn a living. Sure. And it was almost like being two different people at the same time. And what's been so important is to see the collateral beauty in the collateral damage, see the glass half full, not half empty, and to realize that I'm responsible for creating my future moving forward. Right. So there's a lovely analogy of comma and dot, dot, dot. So when my husband died and at the funeral, 
um, after that, I felt like there was this huge full stop in my life. I couldn't see what tomorrow looked like, which is a very rare thing for me. And a friend of mine who's a psychologist said, maybe you should reframe the full stop as a comma, as a pause, and the dots are the future that you are going to create. Such a powerful idea oh. that. So, Nikki, you said something which I just thought it really, really touched me in terms of the network. Mm. Because I think that for, for so many speakers, part of what is sort of quite unique about the industry is that most speakers are a business by themselves, right? You're a sort of a company of one. A brand of a one. A brand of one, as you said, so powerfully. And yet, here you are in a situation where to all intents and purposes, even if temporarily, your business has folded because to a large extent you shut down, it's you've stalled. stalled, you've stalled personally because of your circumstance. And you not only had the network of your friends in the PSA and fellow speakers and so on, but your network surely is also those clients who you've worked with over a long period of time, who know you personally and who see you in this scenario and, and I'm certain still want to support you, still want to hear your story and want to know how you are moving on with this. How have you used your scenario and, and your story as part of your speaking career? Well, this is the challenge I'm facing right now, Boo, is how to integrate the story and the very rich, in a way, rich experiences from a human behavior point of view. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm fascinated by that. That's, that's really what I, what I talk about is family dynamics and team dynamics and leadership dynamics. And it's just, how do I integrate that so that the narrative of six minutes that changed my life does not overtake Nikki Bush, human potential and parenting thought leader. And that is an established brand right. of 12 years that has market share, right. that has a digital presence, that has an online presence, that has a real world presence in radio, TV, newspapers, magazines. Um, how do I integrate all of that to enrich the current work that I do? And then how do I build perhaps new talks around all of this new information in a way that serves the people who will hear it and doesn't wound me yes. at the same time? Absolutely. <clears throat> Little frog in my throat, it's I a love, bit emotional. I, you know, I love um, <coughs> the idea of using your story around the idea of human potential because let's face it, everybody's got stuff. If everybody's got on stuff every on single every level. day yes we all have stuff how brave are we to actually go out there and deal with our stuff and i would say to speakers this is part of your speaking journey right because we are not just speaking we are sowing into people's lives we have to be authentic which means we have to integrate our own life experiences with the stuff that we teach and I think if there's something that I've learned through this experience, it's that our audiences are watching to see how we respond to what life brings to us. Absolutely. And what we say matters. It matters a lot. And exactly as you were also saying, they're watching to see if you are able to walk your own talk. And I have, sh have been so tested here. <laughs> Uh, well, I haven't been tested, but the veracity of what I teach has been tested yeah. in so many ways. I talk about how life doesn't unfold in a straight line. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, here was a real example Absolutely. of how my life did not, not unfold in a way I anticipated. Disruption is part of the human condition. And we need to learn how to absorb it, how to integrate it, how to move on from it. And this has been a fabulous lesson in that, if you can say this has been a fabulous lesson. Uh, through huge trauma and tragedy, there has been enormous collateral beauty and collateral repair and post-traumatic growth. And I think, not think, I believe that in some really incredible way, my husband was an enabler of my first voice around parenting and here he's given me a second voice and I need to find a way to celebrate him 
and celebrate that voice by packaging it in a way that is meaningful to human beings as a whole, be they young, be they old, and I guess this will be a testimony to him. Nikki, thank you so much for your courage. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for your authenticity. I know that you touched so many people in the room. I was standing right at the back there, hoping that you couldn't see I was crying. <laughs> but it was very moving and very, very inspiring because so many of us have been through, if not the same type of issue, something similar, but in ways that we can relate. I think there's a lot of trauma in South Africa and people are watching to see you rise and we're all supporting you and rooting for you and wishing you the very very best thank, thank you, you for sharing your story thank you so, so much so powerful. and Nikki, if people want to get hold of you can you give us your website please sure nikkibush.com very easy n-i-k-k-i-b-u-s-h and then facebook nikki bush speaker nikki bush speaker nikki bush.com thank you so much for joining us thank you